Dear Family Physicians, This past year has been very stressful. The pandemic has had all kinds of effects on your professional life, and you probably feel like you're working beyond your capacity. You felt the increased effects of the stress and burnout more than ever before. But professional stress isn't something new to you. You've watched the system be stretched to its limits for years as a result of continual disinvestment. Despite your best efforts, despite all of our best efforts, our Canadian healthcare system ranks lower than many of our Western counterparts. The pandemic has created an added burden on this already strained system, and family physicians are feeling that burden in many ways. You've always adapted to fill gaps for your patients. When the pandemic started, you saw the need for even more adaptation, and you rose to that challenge. You started working where they needed you, COVID centers, virtual visits, long-term care, the ER. While you've been stretched to your limits, so too have your colleagues and your patients. Part of what makes being a family doc so difficult right now is the ubiquity of these challenges. Everyone is struggling and everyone is stretched so thin. There's no one left to pick up the slack. We've never seen higher levels of anxiety and depression amongst patients and providers. We've never before had to deal with this number of patients having their medical needs pushed aside by a hospital system that needs to make room for emergent care. Yet you still persevere. You continue to adapt to all of these challenges. You've jumped through some serious hoops over the past two years to keep your clinic doors open. You made virtual care happen nearly overnight. You are now delivering an unprecedented amount of mental health care. You continue to take care of those that need you the most during these times. You're doing everything that's asked of you and more. When you're doing this much good for others, why does it feel so hard? Why are you struggling? Well, science suggests a few reasons. First, you have been under an enormous amount of stress. With acute stress, the body goes into a flight or fight response. At first, stress gives us a burst of energy to help power through. But after weeks, months, or now years, chronic stress can lead to poor concentration, irritability, and frustration. And if this continues without attention, it can lead to burnout, anxiety, and reduced stress tolerance. But what's a little stress? You've been handling stress your whole life. You're passionate, driven, organized, and resourceful. These traits have helped you excel from medical school to residency and now an independent practice. But the pandemic is different. These are not problems that you can solve by working harder. In fact, the qualities that helped you excel in the past may be contributing to your stress in such an unpredictable environment as the pandemic. It's not easy to change the way you manage your work, especially when your career might be a big part of your identity. It might be easy to fall into the trap of feeling guilty about not doing everything you can all the time. But the pandemic limits what you're able to do. It's restricting, tiring, and distressing. And even if you feel that you're falling short of your own expectations right now, you are still the same great doctor you have always been. The same great doctor working in a new, incredibly challenging situation. So where do we go from here? It probably comes as no surprise, but the first step is recognizing that you can't change this situation individually. The issues that you face, while greatly exaggerated by the pandemic, are systemic issues that have been present for some time now. They require more than individual effort. Sometimes, just trying to look for that solution is taxing, because it forces you to think about what more you could be doing when that might not be productive or realistic. The second thing that might be helpful is cutting out everything extra. This will be different for everyone. Reevaluate your current commitments to use your time and energy towards what is important to you. Ask what on your to-do list can be adapted, rescheduled, scaled back, or canceled altogether. Protect your time and yourself in the short term so you can continue to be yourself in the long term. The third thing is to speak to yourself in a reassuring manner. Remember, you are not to blame for systemic shortcomings. When you've got a full inbox, back-to-back patients, and nothing they need is available, 
the goal becomes compassion and flexibility instead of perfection. Value the impact of the things that you're doing, even when they might not be everything you wish you could do. The work you are doing is still helping others immensely. During such stressful times, it's especially important to recognize what it is that feeds you, both personally and professionally. What helps you recharge? Invest your time to pursue those interests. Nurturing authenticity in partnerships, friendships, and family ties can lessen the intensity of burnout. That said, it isn't just on you to protect yourself. Systemic problems require systemic solutions. We need to call on institutions to stop asking you to do things that aren't absolutely necessary right now. We need to press for institutions to reflect their commitment to preserving high quality empathic patient care by protecting and supporting the people who provide that care. But in the meantime, know that you are not in this alone. It's normal to find this time difficult and it's normal to struggle. Dear family physicians, thank you for being you and thank you for everything you are doing to help everybody else.